Hi everyone, it's Carolyn from True Crime Chat with Mommy Ramblings and I'm here to talk about a case that's been going on since January when Maya, or Maya, she's better known, Millette, disappeared and she has not been found and there's a lot of really suspicious circumstances but no one has been arrested and she hasn't been found her body hasn't been found she hasn't you know done anything that would show us she's somewhere else so we'll get into all of this and I just want to say thanks to Alma because she asked me to cover this case and so I've been looking up everything I can to this point and this is going to be a video that's going to cover all of that if you're brand new to our channel I urge you to click on the subscribe button in the lower corner of the video and join us the best community on YouTube if you like content like this so let's get into this and see what's going on. Now there was an interview okay, that I watched with an attorney. His name is Bill Little Jr. He was asked to help by the family shortly after May disappeared. And he, in doing that, made a visit to the house. Now he describes himself as an attorney and an investigator. And so what he did, he went by the house on the 11th of January and he said he just walked up knocked on the door and Larry invited him in he began to talk to Larry and ask him some questions and he also noticed some things in the house he noticed uh, right away that all of the windows were open the fans were on full speed and the house was quite chilly now the husband Larry chalk this up to malfunctioning AC unit or something and that he had to open the windows and put the fans on but now this attorney investigator said that because of the air movement it was impossible to get an odor of anything like bleach so he did not smell anything like that he noticed that there was a hole about 10 inches by he said by six to eight inches rectangular shape that had been freshly repaired by the door and he said it's as if someone punched through it to kind of unlock the door from the uh, other side and so he mentioned that to Larry that it felt damp and Larry said uh, no that was something that uh, May did she punched a hole in the wall and that wasn't new okay then he noticed that the garage was immaculate you know pretty for a garage and he thought that a freezer was missing from what he'd been told about from a family member that there should be a freezer there the freezer was missing he reported that to the Chula Vista police and then he decided to track down that freezer because Larry had said that it, a relative had picked it up and he did go to their house and he did see the freezer and take a picture of it and that relative said that they picked up that freezer on July uh, January 9th now May last seen January 9th of 2021 but she wasn't reported missing until about 48 hours later so when they picked that up at January 9th it was about 48 hours from the time that May was last seen okay um, during the course of his investigation this attorney has been sent dozens and dozens up to hundreds of text messages and posts from Larry to his family friends his wife's supervisor okay what were these going on about they were going on about suspicions that his wife was having an affair and he had first started talking to family and friends about that there were text messages to his wife and then even to his wife's supervisor at her job saying that male co-workers needed to be moved with no evidence of an affair and then there were pictures one of an altar with candles and something that like blood drops and May's picture he started posting biblical quotes about adulterous women something you know that would have her steps lead straight to the grave that altar with the lit candles and 
the day that May filled out a form to book an appointment with an attorney it is the last day that anyone has seen her. Again, that was January 7th of 2021. The Chula Vista police have confirmed that they have spoken to this attorney and seen and all of his information and they just said, well, you know, he may not be aware that they have a lot of information he hasn't seen. And when this attorney was asked why he stopped, you know, going and talking to people and, do, and getting involved in this investigation, he said it's because the Chula Vista Police Department had asked him not to, and he did not want to disrupt the investigation. Now, Larry, on the other hand, said that Bill Little Jr posed as a law enforcement agent to try to gain entry to the home. And I do have a statement and we'll get to that in a second. We'll go over that just as a little recap. And this attorney, Bill Little Jr. denies that. Larry says, my wife is a good woman and everything else is just noise. Again, I'll get into the full statement in just a minute. This is a message, one of the ones the attorney shared with this news media station, CBS 8. And it's from Larry on June 28th, 9.20 p.m. It says, for the lips of the adulterous woman drip honey, and her speech is smoother than oil, but in the end she is bitter as gall, sharp as a double-edged sword. Her feet go down to death. Her steps lead straight to the grave. She gives no thought to the way of life. Her paths wander aimlessly, but she does not know it. Now then, my sons, listen to me. Do not turn aside from what I say. Keep to a path far from her. Do not go near the door of her house, lest you lose your honor to others and your dignity to one who is cruel. Lest strangers feast on your wealth and your toil enrich the house of another. At the end of your life, you will groan when your flesh and body are spent. You will say, how I hated discipline, how my heart spurned correction i would not obey my teachers or turn my ear to my instructors proverbs 5 3 13 niv and so that was something that larry had posted a little more detail about bill little jr's visit to the home okay again it was on january 11th of 2021 he walked up knocked on the door had a discussion with larry he went up to the bedroom where allegedly may had been locking herself in ostensibly to get away from larry and we talked about that hole that he saw with the repair being still damp and then the attorney said well you know it really wasn't on a level that somebody would have punched and there was another hole in the bedroom repaired that was at a level that someone could have punched that but the one by the bedroom door was not consistent with punching level and was damp and you can still see the repair. Before Bill Little Jr. arrived at the house, he had already been told that the windows were all open and the fans were going at full speed. And that was because, as I said, Larry was saying something was happening with the AC. He also knew about an allegation that a freezer had been taken out of the garage. But Bill Little Jr. wanted to establish a relationship with Larry, okay? He wanted to see what he could find out. And in that conversations that he had, which he didn't have any after this day because, again, the Chula Vista Police Department had asked him to stop doing this. But he um, had asked him about something about borrowing gun cleaning equipment to clean his guns. And Larry said, yes, he did um, ask to borrow gun cleaning equipment to clean his guns, which was weird because it was the weekend that his wife went missing that he was doing this. And 
the uh, attorney asked him something about gun residue on his hands, and Larry said, oh, yeah, I've been shooting. Bill Little Jr. said everything with Larry was basically conversational and that he never had an opportunity to talk to him again. The garage, although it had been cleaned, didn't smell of bleach, but it was pretty spotless, okay? And he was trying to track down that freezer. So he told the Chula Vista Police Department that the freezer was indeed missing from the garage. He didn't know if they were going to take action, so he decided to do it himself. And he found that one of Larry's relatives had it. He went to their house, he took a picture, and he did have it. The relative said that he had been planning on taking that for a long time. So it's apparently a coincidence that it happened within 24 hours of May going missing. And he said he took it on January 9th and he believes it was in the morning hours. Okay, so the text messages that this attorney obtained he obtained them again when he was interviewing witnesses and they would forward messages or they would take pictures of the screenshots or they would send him screenshots, whatever he amassed, quite a collection of texts and messages. Some Facebook chats were also screenshot and sent to him. And throughout these, there was a theme that Larry was concerned that his wife was having an affair. He seemed to think this by just looking at the messages and they seem to start in January of 2020 when he started talking to family and friends about this. He accused his wife of having an affair and then he was talking to her supervisors asking for those male co-workers to be moved. It just went, you know, he was accusing people from one individual to another co-worker, you know, move that one, move this one, and it just kind of ramped up as the time went by and as it progressed all through the summer and then September of 2020, he was really in full swing. He was forcing her to read the Bible. He would read it to her when she wasn't responsive to this. He tried to have a pastor force her to stay in the marriage. We have that blood altar picture that he created with May's face and blood sprinkled on it with candles. And at the end of 2020, May was asking her family for money to retain an attorney because Larry locked her out of their accounts, even though she was the primary breadwinner. Seems there was lots of irrational thoughts um, from Larry about this when he had no proof of any affairs. He was ultimately unable to control her. And so this day that she set up an appointment for this lawyer, okay, it was, she was on a Thursday that she filled out this form to make the appointment. She set the appointment for Tuesday. They were supposed to go on a trip for their daughter's 11th birthday. And that was that weekend. So she wanted to have the appointment on Tuesday, but she was never seen after Thursday, okay? This attorney did confirm that May did not show for that Tuesday appointment. She didn't call to cancel it or reschedule. And during the day on Thursday, at some time, she had a Facebook call with some friends and they hadn't heard from her since around 5 p.m. that evening, the 7th of January, 2021. Circumstantial evidence in this case is very strong, says Bill Little Jr. and that Someone said that Larry, someone came forward and said Larry on December 25th expressed a desire to kill May and her boyfriend. January 4th, he had a conversation with someone to kill May's boyfriend for $20,000 and then five days later she goes missing. He stalled going to police and reporting her missing, seeming to know the first 48 hours are critical. And then something about he went to a beach for 12 hours, but then didn't have time to participate in search parties because he was just too busy with children. And yet they're pointing out that he had time to go to the beach for all those hours. 
Now regarding Billy Little Jr. and what his interview was like to this CBS 8 station, they contacted Larry and this is what Larry said and I quote, he lied and presented himself as NCIS to gain access into my home. He misrepresented himself to gain access to my family's home as well, claiming to be NCIS. He lies and misrepresents himself, posing to be law enforcement. More lies, implications, and speculations. I do not hate anyone and just hope people can stop spreading lies and making our lives into entertainment in the media. We are already going through difficult times. Also, I'm not quite sure if impersonating NCIS is a crime, but it should be. Lies, maybe CV, Chula Vista Police Department, PD, will not work with him. Who knows his logic? People have their own agenda and reasons why they do things. He's been untruthful from the start and seems to be willing to do anything, including manipulating the situation. My wife is a good woman and she's missing. Everything else is just noise. Okay, so let's go into some um, background on both May, Maya, and Larry. So May's 40th birthday was May 1st. Last seen January 7th. Now Larry has since lawyered up, stopped fielding police questions and requests to help them in the investigation to find his wife. From several news reports and interviews, we know that Larry and May were high school sweethearts. They have three children. Larry and May married in 1999 when they were both 18. And in that same year, then Larry enlisted in the US Navy in Honolulu. Larry served in the U.S. Navy with no disciplinary actions from the year 2000 to 2005. December 6th of 2001, Larry was assigned to the Naval Medical Center located in San Diego, California. And his duties there were to perform routine optician duties. Okay. 2003, Larry was the recipient of several awards. He was the recipient of a Navy and Marine Corps Achievement Medal a National Defense Service Medal, a Global War on Terrorism Medal, and a Good Conduct Medal, as well as a Pistol Sharpshooter Ribbon. His rank when he ended his U.S. Navy active service on August 27th of 2005 was a Hospital Corpsman 3rd Class HM3. And his U.S. Navy Reserve obligation was terminated on January 10th of 2008. Larry and May had their first child a daughter in January of 2010, and their second daughter was born in 2011. In 2016, May gave birth to a son. 2020 was the time frame for all of these text messages and suspicions of May having an affair when they started. Now, January 3rd of 2021 is another key point in this because allegedly Larry and May had an argument while they were on a family camping trip. Her sister was there along with her sister's husband. Her sister's name is Mary Chris and her husband is Richard. They said that uh, May and Larry had an argument again on January 3rd on this camping trip about a Jeep Wrangler that they had brought with them on this trip. Now on that same trip, another family member said that May said if anything was to happen to her, that it would be Larry that did it. Larry was the last person to see May on January 7th of 2021 but he didn't report her missing um, until the 9th, and that wasn't even by his doing. I'll explain that in a minute. May and Larry had a trip planned for their 11-year-old's birthday to go to Big Bear Lake in San Bernardino County on January 9th, and that's why May was holding off that appointment with the lawyer until Tuesday. Now, on January 11th is when 
Billy Little Jr. tours the house. By February 4th, Larry retained an attorney and he's no longer cooperating in the investigation. Larry also owned 22 firearms. And a little bit on Maya is that she was born in the Philippines. She worked as a contract specialist in the Naval base in San Diego. She is one of five children. Her family last saw her around 5 p.m. on January 7th, 2021, same day that she filled out that form to make that appointment with that divorce attorney. Her appointment with the divorce attorney was January 12th. Now, a witness said that he heard a discussion that Larry suspected may of having a boyfriend and wanted to pay someone $20,000 to kill him. May's identification card or credit cards and phone are unaccounted for. Her credit card has not been used since her disappearance and her phone goes straight to voicemail. Now a day before May was reported missing, her brother went to the house because she wasn't responding to group texts about an upcoming birthday trip for her daughter. So when he goes to the house, you know, Larry says, hey, She's locked herself into the bedroom. We had an argument, she locked herself in the bedroom. Her brother goes up there, he knocks on the door, but he just thinks his sister doesn't want to be bothered, so he leaves. And the next, and the little girl, excuse me, said to her uncle that mommy's been in there for 11 hours. From what they heard from this, relatives said that Larry was very nervous when the brother was there, kind of shaky. He seemed not to expect that May's brother would come to the house. Now the next day, May's father went to the house and he insisted that Larry open the locked bedroom door with a key. And that's when they confirmed that May wasn't in there and Larry said he didn't realize his wife was missing until January 8th when his father-in-law came to the house. On January 9th, May's sister, Mary Chris, called the Chula Vista Police Department to report her sister missing. On um, January 10th of 2021, the Chula Vista Police Department Lieutenant Miriam Fox confirmed that police officers arrived at May's home along the 2400 block of Paseo Los Gatos in Chula Vista at about 1 a.m. Okay, to investigate the report of May's disappearance. It was at that point that investigators learned that May had vanished three days prior. The search for the missing mom then began at that point. Now, family and friends said May's car was still at her home, but her phone calls went straight to voicemail. And the five foot, two inch, 105 pound woman with brown hair and brown eyes, along with freckles, has and a tattoo on her wrist has not been found. And time is just going on here. So that's what I have here on this case, and I will continue to look into it, but this is just a opening into it, if you would uh, like to call it that, where I just let you know about everything that I've checked out in trying to learn about this case. Now, if you have other information that you'd like to bring forth, write it in the comments or come on one of our lives and talk to us about it, and I will be continuing to dive into this and see what other information I can find out and what a sad case. It doesn't sound promising that it's going to have a happy ending at all. And um, just really, really sad case. Another case where somebody tries to problem solve by getting rid of someone. It's really a sad state of affairs. Thank you all for watching. Have a great day and I hope you have a good weekend. Bye now.